All right, in this video, I want to consider free fall. Here's a problem. Maybe you can read it. Hopefully you can. Stone is dropped from a height of five meters. I want to know how long it will be in the air. All right, I'll show this problem to you again in a couple times, but I want to use this to illustrate free fall, okay? When I do free fall, it's really important to recognize, first of all, that it is a free fall. And by free fall, I mean an object that is only subjected to gravity. So if I have an object here and I drop it, the only force that it's subjected to is gravity, okay? And that applies whether an object is falling down or if I throw an object up and catch it. Because if I throw it up, it'll eventually come back down. The reason it comes back down is because of the acceleration due to gravity, okay? Both of those cases are free fall problems. We need to recognize when we have a free fall problem. And there are certain key things that we need to remember when we have a free fall problem. This is still a kinematics problem though, okay? So we still ask ourselves, is there acceleration in the problem? And the answer is yes, there has to be acceleration in the free fall because we've already asked ourselves, when this ball falls, does it go the same speed on the way down or does it pick up speed? Well, I think we all know that it's gonna pick up speed on the way down. That means there has to be acceleration and that acceleration is because of gravity. So if there is acceleration, we know that we're gonna use the kinematics equations, okay? Let's draw a picture first. Object is falling. Stone is dropped. Okay, dropped from a height of five meters. We want to know how long it will be in the air. So I know the height here is five meters. Uh, my question is how long will this thing be in the air? No, I'll leave it like that. Um, Let's just leave the picture like that. Kinematics problem. Kinematics, right? So the first thing we do when we know we're doing kinematics is ATVVD, right? Write down our equations. A, T, V, I, V, F, and delta D. ATVVD. And we ask ourselves, do we know all of these things? Do we know A in the problem? Well, if it's a free fall problem, Yes, you know acceleration because I told you a few classes back about the acceleration due to gravity. All things accelerate toward the Earth at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, but the last time you fell down, ask yourself which way you fell. Yeah, I know that's a tough question because nobody has ever fallen up ever since you've ever. Uh, walked on planet Earth, everything falls down. And if the acceleration to gravity always pulls you down, that means that this value here needs to be negative. Acceleration due to gravity will always, always, always be negative. And it will always be negative 9.8. You can erase this because it's going to confuse us if we don't. It will always be negative 9.8. Go to the next one. Do I know the time? Here's the equation again. No, I do not know the time. Do I know the initial velocity? Yes, I do. In this equation, this stone is being dropped. That means we just simply let go. And in that case, the initial velocity has to be zero. Has to start from zero. Do we know the final velocity? No, it doesn't tell us about the final velocity. Now, you may think the final velocity is the velocity of the ball when it hits the pavement. Because in that case, the velocity is zero, and we know that. But here's the problem with that. If we start at zero at the top, and we end at zero at the bottom, have we accelerated any? Well, no, we haven't. So that can't be accelerated motion. When we talk about final velocity, what we mean is, what is the velocity the instant right before that ball hits the ground? How fast is it going right before it hits? Most of the time with free fall problems, not always, but most of the time, you're not going to know this. We don't know this in this case. It doesn't tell us. Delta D, that's five meters. Now, I want to think about two things, remember, two things before I move on from the G step. Number one is units. I'm going to look at all my units and check to see if I need conversions. These happen to be okay. Five meters is okay. Meters per second squared is good. Meters per second is good. Next, I want to know about direction. We already talked about direction with the acceleration, but let's look at this other number we have here. We have to consider direction with all of these variables except for time. Time is a scalar quantity. 
you don't say, when somebody asks you what time it is, you don't say three o'clock west, because that's stupid. Because time only has a number. That's why we don't have to consider direction with time. Everything else, we have to consider direction. So five meters, what direction is that? Well, that's pretty simple to answer because are we falling down or are we falling up? Well, clearly we're going down, and if we're going down, this is going to be a negative distance, a negative displacement. So we have to make five meters negative. All right, now we're done. We're gonna move on from there, go to the unknowns. I don't know time, and I don't know final velocity. The question now is, which one of those does the problem ask me for? How long will it be in the air? That's definitely time. Time is what I want to know. And if I want to know time, that means I don't care about the final velocity. So I find an equation that has time and not final velocity. If you want to, pause the video real quick and look for one of your own, because I'm going to have to do that too. All right, so the equation we're going to use, if you found this, the right equation is delta D equals VIT plus one half A T squared. That's our equation. Make sure to write it out with your letters before you substitute anything in. Now we can substitute and solve. Delta D, negative five. If it's negative here, make sure it goes in negative here. VI is zero plus one half A is negative 9.8 and we have T squared over here. Solve that. Zero times T goes away because that's zero. So we end up with negative five equals one half times negative 9.8 T squared. My next step will be to get rid of this 9.8 times a half gives me negative 4.9 t squared. Try to isolate t. The next step to do that is net divide by negative 4.9. 5 divided by negative 4.9 gives us a number. This cancels out, which is good because we want to isolate t. I'm going to move over here to have a little more space now. 5 divided by negative 4, negative 5 divided by negative 4.9 gives us positive 1.02, and that's equal to t squared. We're still left with t squared over here. The last step when our variable is squared is to take the square root. And our time, we do that, it is 1.01 .01 seconds. So if we drop a stone from a height of five meters, it's gonna take 1.01 .01 seconds to reach the bottom.